NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang just explain why China is beating the US on the most important layer of AI. When Jensen speaks, you better listen. So tell me, how do you feel about this, uh, this, this great competition with China? I mean, the, 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 the government is putting enormous resources underneath their champion. We don't do that in this country. You know, uh, how do you feel about that? Well, before I get there, don't don't let me not answer that question. I'm dying to answer it, but let me handicap the next two layers. The large, the language, the model layer, the model layer. United States frontier models. United, our our frontier models are unquestionably world class. We are probably call it six months ahead. However, out of the 1.4 million models, most of them are open source. China is well ahead, way ahead on open source. Now, the reason why open source is so important is because without open source, startups can't thrive, university researchers can't do research, you can't teach AI, scientists can't use AI. Basically, all of the industry around the, your economy have no ability to fundamentally advance themselves unless you have open source. Without Linux, where would we be? Without Kubernetes, where, you know, without PyTorch, all of these different types of technologies that made AI thrive are all open source. Mm. They are well ahead of us on open source. Mm. Mm. And then the layer above that, applications. If you were to do a poll of, of um, uh, their society and ours, and you ask them, uh, is AI likely to do more good than harm? They're going to say, in their case, 80% would say AI will do more good than harm. In our case, it'd be the other way around. <laughs> and so that tells you something that's very, very yeah. important. Socially, socially, we need yeah. to be careful not to describe AI in these science fiction movie ways of describing AI and, and causing people so much concern. Um, we want to be concerned, but we also want to be practical. AI is about automation. And that area, I think that we need to be careful not to fall behind in the application and the diffusion of AI, because in the end, whoever applies the technology first and most wins that industrial revolution. As you know, electricity was invented, discovered, invented in the UK, but the United States applied it faster, more broadly, and as a result, look where we are. And so we have to be a little mindful. And so anyways, I just handicapped that stack, okay? Yeah. And I don't think it's, it's important when you're looking at AI not to see it as a holistic thing. It's really not about ChatGPT versus DeepSeek. You have to look at it across all of the stacks and across all of the industries. Does that make sense? It's a little bit more complicated than one simple answer. But do you feel you have a level playing field up against China putting their resources under Huawei? Uh, I, for, first of all, uh, America's technology industry, just as our financial, financial services industry, our military, our technology industry, we can all agree are the mightiest in the world. I am part of one of the mightiest technology, mightiest industries anyone in history has ever seen. Oh. We have going toe to toe against anyone. The American technology industry has nothing to fear. We are mighty, we're fast, we're inventive, we'll take anybody on. However, we can't concede the market to them. As you know, at the moment, NVIDIA has been banned from going to China, not to mention China has banned NVIDIA going to China. Yeah. So, so we're, we're this, I think we're the first company in history that has been banned on both sides. <laughs> uh, and so, so uh, whoever, whoever banned us uh, going to China, um, uh, them and China uh, agree that <laughs> NVIDIA should not go to... Now, of course, I'm being a little, I'm being a little cute here, and I'll, 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 be, I'll be a little bit more nuanced here in a second, but at the moment, we're simply not competing in China. Now, what's going on? 
we have conceded essentially the second largest AI market, the second largest technology market in the world. I know. China will, it's not, somebody has said to me, well, yeah, okay, well, we're not in China, but we're going to grow somewhere else. You're not going to replace China. It's just as the world wanting to sell to America and they want to export to America. If they don't export to America, you're not going to replace the United States. We are singular in the world. We are absolutely singular. And so in the case of China, um, we shouldn't concede the entire market to them. They're formidable, but con conceding that entire market, uh, we ought to go compete for it. Having said that, we should also acknowledge that Huawei is one of the most formidable technology companies the world has ever seen. They deserve, although they have a lot of support, um, whatever support they have, they deserve all of the respect that everybody ought to give them. The US is ahead on frontier models, but China is way ahead on open source. When people talk about the AI race with China, they usually focus on who has the best models. For example, ChatGPT or Gemini versus their competitors. Which country has the most powerful AI? The AI stack has multiple layers. At the top, you have the frontier models. These are the most advanced, most capable systems, the ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. This is the cutting edge stuff, which makes most of the headlines. American companies lead on frontier model development, but underneath that layer, you have the open source models. These are AI models that anyone can use for free. Anyone can modify them. Anyone can build on top of them. The code is public. You don't need permission. You don't pay licensing fees. You just download and use. Open source models are an extremely important pillar in the AI ecosystem. Startups building AI companies can't afford to pay massive licensing fees to frontier models. They need open source. University researchers don't have budgets for expensive API calls. They need open source. Teachers educating the next generation need a model student can experiment with freely. They need open source. So China is dominating the layer that enables broad economic adoption. China is building the foundation that lets their entire economy advance with AI. The historical examples that Jensen gave help to understand how it plays out. Linux is an open source operating system. Today it runs most of the internet, most of the cloud, most smartphones through Android. Without Linux being open source, none of that happens. China understands this and is investing heavily in open source AI, meaning they're positioning themselves to enable widespread adoption across their economy. Every Chinese startup has access to capable AI models. Every Chinese university can teach AI properly. Every Chinese company can integrate AI into their operations. On top of that, the electricity example is perfect. American cities got electric lighting first. American factories got electric machinery first. American homes got electrical appliances first. The result was that American industry became more productive. American workers became more efficient. American companies became more competitive globally. The UK invented the technology but the US captured most of the economic value by applying it more broadly and quickly. The same pattern could happen with AI. China applies AI across their economy faster, they capture more of the economic value. Their industries become more productive, their companies become more competitive. If only big tech companies can afford to use AI, applications stay narrow. When most people in a society believe AI will do more good than harm, they embrace it. Companies adopt it eagerly, workers learn to use it, Regulators enable it. The whole society moves faster towards AI adoption. When most people in a society fear AI, the opposite happens, obviously. When people describe AI in terms of robot uprisings and human extinction, it creates fear. That fear slows adoption. It's all fundamentally about automation. Automating tasks that used to require human effort. That's practical, that's useful, that's how technology has always worked. But automation sounds boring, whereas science fiction apocalypse sounds exciting. The media gravitates towards the more exciting narrative, even though it's potentially less accurate. The danger is falling behind on diffusion. Diffusion means how widely technology spreads through society. The US might lead on invention, but lag on diffusion. That happened with mobile payments. The technology was invented in the US, but China adopted more mobile payments far more widely. Industrial revolutions are won by application. Britain invented the steam engine, but the US became the dominant industrial power 
by applying steam power across their economy more broadly. Japan didn't invent consumer electronics, but dominated the industry for decades by applying the technology better. All these examples show how adopting new technologies faster than other countries and applying them can transform an entire economy and future. Jensen's pointing out that we're focused on the flashy top layer while China is dominating the foundational layer. The US is winning the headline battle while potentially losing the economic war. So that's why the open source advantage matters more than a lot of people realize. But Jensen also talked about an even bigger strategic problem conceding an entire market. The US has conceded the second largest AI market to China by banning Nvidia from competing there. Markets aren't interchangeable. You can't lose access to one large market and just make up the revenue somewhere else. Each major market is unique and irreplaceable. China is the second largest technology market in the world. Hundreds of millions of consumers, millions of businesses, massive government spending on technology, infrastructure investments at enormous scale. That market generates revenue, creates opportunities, and drives innovation. When Nvidia gets banned from that market, they lose all of it. They can't sell chips in China, they can't partner with Chinese companies, they can't participate in Chinese AI development. They're completely shut out. The situation Jensen describes is remarkable. Both the US and China have banned Nvidia. The US banned Nvidia from selling advanced chips to China for national security reasons, China responds by banning NVIDIA for their own reasons. Being the first company in history banned by both sides shows how technology has become a geopolitical battleground. Companies are caught between governments pursuing national interests. The technology industry used to be more separate from geopolitics. Now they're completely intertwined. When you can see the market, your competitors own it. Chinese AI chip companies now have their domestic market to themselves. They can build scale, they can generate revenue, they can invest, they can iterate and improve without competing against NVIDIA. Some will argue that makes them stronger. They're not just serving China, they're using China as a base to build global capabilities. The Chinese market is so large that companies can achieve massive scale selling there domestically. Then they can use that scale to compete globally. They'll develop better technology, they'll achieve economies of scale, they'll build distribution networks, all without facing competition from the best American companies. Countries looking for cheap alternatives might choose Chinese chips. Chinese chips become a viable option globally once they're good enough, especially if they're cheaper. American companies are not weak. Jensen's saying they're incredibly strong. American tech companies dominate globally. When you're strong, you should be competing everywhere. You should be taking on all challenges in all markets. The national security argument is that selling advanced chips to China helps their military. That's a legitimate concern, but there are some ways to address national security concerns while still competing commercially. Export controls on specific military applications, restrictions on certain customers, requirements for transparency. Many tools exist besides total market concession. Competing in China while managing national security risks is difficult, but conceding the entire market also has national security implications. If you want to go from AI is confusing to feeling confident and understanding it, I built a course that is built for you. It breaks down the essentials, then covers things like compute hardware and how AI actually works in the real world. Once you join, you get lifetime access, and because the course expands over time, the price will also go up over time. So now is the best time to join. Most people pour money into ads people ignore. YouTube changes that, it builds trust, authority and a real connection at scale. One law firm we worked with landed 33 clients in just five months worth $330,000 from their YouTube channel. If you run a business, this is one of the most overlooked opportunities right now. Book a call with me below and I can show you how we can make it happen.